All right. Hello, hello. What it do? Hello, folks. How are you all doing? Welcome. Welcome to the next segment of the Unidos live stream. Thank you all so much for being here. I am Pablo Montero. And with this, we are kicking off the Twitch Adam panel. Woo, so exciting. Um, so basically, I just want to come real quick <clears throat> and introduce everyone to this panel that um, we're bringing you from part of the Twitch Latin America team. This is from streaming to staff, how I became full-time at Twitch. Uh, really excited to be here with you all. Uh, we work a lot with Latinx and gaming, and this is some great stuff to be here and to support the cause. Uh, we basically wanted to come and talk a little bit about our experience, you know, as part of the Latin American community, as Latinos, as Hispanics, uh, in, you know, in the Twitch ecosystem, so to speak, you know, especially coming from the side of, oh, I think, I think um, I'm getting some messages in my Slack that I may not be hearing myself. Um, I'm not but sure if I can I hear you guys. I don't know if someone in the chat can let me know, uh, but Hannah, you I'm doing my me? thing over here. I can't hear Pablo. We're good, we're good. I'm going to check the stream real quick, see if I can. Uh, I can't hear you yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I am. Yeah, I, I, yeah, am I, I can hear myself in the stream, stream. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep on it. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Uh, hello to everybody awesome. in the chat. Awesome. Much appreciated. Uh, great to know that everything's <laughs> working fine. Uh, we've got a real show for you today. Uh, I'm just really happy that we get the chance to be here with you all and talk a little bit about what it's like being a person from our culture uh, within Twitch, you know, and how that comes about and try to show some experiences and some key learnings that maybe you might be able to use in your path through the gaming industry, you know, and who knows, maybe we might end up being coworkers. Uh, basically, the idea is just to share some knowledge and basically um, all of us to uh, learn and grow from this. So without further ado, that's it from streaming to staff, how I became full time at Twitch. How's that? I am Pablo Montero. I do strategic partnerships for uh, Twitch in Latin America. And uh, I'm also joined by two very great co-workers of mine in the team, Carla del Castillo and Hannah Watton. I would like both of you, if you want to introduce yourselves, Carla, you want us to go with you first? Sure. Uh, hello, everybody. And thank you so much uh, for having us here. Um, it's always a pleasure to have a, this space to talk a little bit about our history and how we ended up where we are. Uh, my name is Carla del Castillo, and I am currently the senior partner manager for the Spanish speaking side of Latin America. Awesome. Well, um, I'll take it from here. Uh, hi, Twitch. How are you doing? Thank you very much for this invitation. I am just a little bit nervous, but I am so excited to share with you guys <laughs> like all these experiences, all this journey that has been uh, so long since I started streaming first. And well, I am Hannah. I am also, I am also known as Cherrygan uh, within the gaming community. And yeah, let's kick this off. Cool, cool. So, so there we go. So there we go. Uh, this is um, basically part of the Twitch Latin America team. We, we, there's more of us, but uh, we wanted to hop in and you know participate. I would like to thank Latin X and Gaming for giving us the space and all of the wonderful folks that are helping you know make everything work within the production, the logistics, making it happen, and of course everybody in the chat. So just so you guys know, what we're going to be talking about is uh, like a walkthrough about how this came about, right? So we're all streamers before we all had to do, uh, uh, we all had to participate in Twitch before as a user. And that's how we started. We had an affinity for the platform and how basically that affinity uh, went on to become like opportunity for growth and, and eventually uh, ending up working at Twitch. We've all had uh, different ways of going about that. And it's more of like how you basically navigate the industry. And we're going to be talking about that road to each of us. And then, of course, at the end, we're going to try and have some Q&A. Uh, if everybody's interested in maybe asking some questions about what we talked about or something different. Uh, I do want to make some mentions, though, just so people know uh, what, what, what this is about. We're all on the Twitch Latin America partnership team. So basically, uh, we handle stuff in Latin America, specifically the Spanish speaking America. So that's basically everything in LATAM except Brazil. Um, so we don't really have much visibility on NA or other global stuff. Uh, so just so you guys know, in case that you guys want to ask some questions like that, just so you know. And also we're partnerships, so that also know that uh, what part of the team we come from. You know, just some disclaimers that you know uh, the powers that be require us to do. And also, of course, that you may know that uh, the views that are or the, or the thoughts that are shared here are our own and may not represent the entirety of Twitch. So uh, just without further ado, and having taken that out of the way. So basically, we're here. We're doing it. I'm so happy to be sharing this with you all. Uh, so let's go, let's, let's kick it from there, from streaming to staff. We need to start with the streaming. So as I mentioned, everybody here uh, started out as being a, a Twitch streamer at one point in time. And I would really like to take this chronologically because here we have one of the 
OGs, OGs of the OGs in Twitch that I am. And that's Carla del Castillo. That's Carla Cibrel. Uh, how, how long has it been? Like six, seven years now, Carla, since you started streaming and eventually ended up working at Twitch? Can you tell me a little bit about so, how that came about? Yeah, I started streaming like the first days were like late 2013, I believe. And then I started like regularly streaming on 2014. And then a year or two after that, uh, I eventually uh, became a Twitch staff, which means that this is my fifth year. Uh, I'm already above we have five years working uh, for the platform by now. Talk about being an OG. That's, and just so people know, that's five years, that's pre ac So that's before Amazon came in. So Carlos has been through multiple eras of Twitch, so to speak, and has navigated different walks of life throughout, you know, what has been Twitch as a, as a company, so to speak. But um, it's it's not really just like, you know, working at Twitch. It really comes from a background of actually supporting the community. And I think that's one of the key points that we're going to be talking about in the road through this. But Hannah, just so people have an idea, like how, how, how did you came about uh, in like starting streaming and all that stuff? Oh, uh, well, it all started for me at the end of my university years. That was around 2014. And I was just, uh, it was around finishing my medical degree when I, I kicked off my stream. And uh, well, at that point, I had been playing a lot of World of Warcraft for several years. And I had built already some good friendships and a community around this game. And I really feel like, uh, I've always felt like, uh, wow, like this game changed my life in, in the sense that it helped me understand how much I loved uh, sharing experiences and building these relationships and interacting with people. So I just kicked it off when I was almost graduating. So I had a little more spare time uh, besides studying. And I mean, that's how it all started and the rest is, <laughs> is history. It really is, it really is. So um, that's a little bit from Carla and from Hannah. I, I'm going to share a little bit of my own uh, just so people know. Um, well, basically, I actually didn't quite start streaming on my own specifically. It was more so uh, I've been in esports for a hot minute and I've always liked Smash tournaments. So I eventually ended up going to Smash tournament with some friends and, you know, we saw that there were some streams and stuff like that. And we were thinking of bringing it over to, you know, like our local hometown. Uh, personally, I'm from Veracruz, Mexico. Everybody here is from Mexico, and um, we all work at Twitch out of the Mexico, out of Mexico City. So uh, we've all had different works of life uh, throughout all of the Republic of Mexico. But uh, it's more so like there was something that was happening out there, and it wasn't really in the community that I was part of. So it was more like bringing it about. So eventually, we started making tournaments over in my hometown of Veracruz, and we started streaming those, and it started snowballing from there in terms of like um, actually putting something on Twitch. And I personally look back on that time the most because it's like when, kick, when things were kicking off and it was like, you know, Twitch back in the day, also sometimes some sort of free act time, you know, when um, it was very really different back in the day. And I would just like to highlight some of the, maybe like the memories or things that we look back on from that time. Like maybe uh, Carla, Hannah, is there anything from, from back in the day that you, you, look, you look back to like, oh, so this, one, this is the stuff that I really enjoy when I first started at Twitch and that, you know, um, good memories that I made back in the day. Any come to mind? I have memories like back in the day for both streaming and uh, both working at Twitch. I'm not sure which one you want to hear. <laughs> I guess we will go with the streaming ones first since we're like <laughs> talking about, you know, like Batman, the origin so type beat. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, a very, you know, quick uh, recap of what happened in my early years uh, streaming is that I come from a very small town in uh, northern Mexico, that is Ciudad Obregón, Sonora. And um, that town has really grown by now. But uh, back in the day, like when back when gaming was like, oh my God, he's a gamer. Like not everybody like was into video games, even less if you were a girl. It's not like you had a, a lot of people like to talk all of the nerdy stuff that you like, right? And um, I, I was kind of shy at the beginning. So I was like, uh, try. It was kind of daunting at first to, you know, be in front of a camera, be in front of a microphone, and just start streaming. And at the very beginning, like, uh, maybe I had one person, two persons at most. But there was a point where uh, there was, you know, an actual conversation with people from different parts of the country, sometimes from other countries. And, and after a few days doing that, it, it was like, 
I'm doing it, you know, like I'm having, uh, I'm actually, you know, talking with uh, people that I would have never had a chance to know. And uh, we're, you know, doing our thing. And I, I, I feel so, I felt at home right then and there. I felt like I was doing my thing, you know, and uh, I don't think that, that that's something that had ever happened to me before. So I, whenever I think about, you know, my early times uh, uh, streaming, I always go, go back to that day. I, I think I was playing, I was playing um, Don't Starve. <laughs> Uh, not that I remember. That was one of the first uh, games I ever did. Then I did Dark Souls as well. So yeah, <laughs> I really, I, yeah. Um, I, w I would like to add that I also went through that process because uh, during my school days I used to be uh, pretty much an introvert. I was either playing or was doing all my school chores. So I was pretty much an introvert. I didn't make uh, much friends along the way uh, during my school days. But when I started streaming, I uh, one of the first uh, games I started with, besides World of Warcraft, was Outlast. And I always felt like a, it was a really bad and a really good decision at the same time. It was a really bad decision because I was horrorized with the game itself. It's kind of hardcore, but I was also terrified with uh, all this interaction. Sometimes I didn't pay attention to the chat, so some guys just came and they realized I wasn't paying attention and they just walked away of the stream. But at the end of the game, when I finally made it to the end of the game, I was, I felt like free. I felt like I could be pretty much myself and, and share all these, uh, if you want to say cringe or uncomfortable moments or terrifying moments with other people, and we could have fun about it and have fun and laugh, and laugh at myself. It was a uh, kind of, uh, it gave me some, some sense, some sense of freedom. And um, from then on forward, I think, um, even my interaction got even better with all the guys that were uh, at, on my chat. And I believe to, to this date, uh, some of the original chatters in my stream are still uh, in touch with me on Discord and we get together still to play Among Us. So it is really interesting how you can build up all these relationships with all these randoms at first that end up somehow being some kind of friends. You no, know? So I think that's... Uh, a really good part and magical part of what Twitch has been offering all along these years. That's so nice to hear. As the young kids would say, you love to see it. And, and, yeah. and you really do. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think that um, we've all had, you know, those moments that we look back on when we start discovering Twitch. I think that a lot of people in the chat can relate. I can definitely relate to that. But uh, I I would like to understand a little bit more, you know, like the whole context of it, because I understand that there's a lot of things that we can look back on uh, to, you know, from what we've lived. But I, I also want to have a, an understanding of maybe if there were any challenges for you both uh, through, through this time. Uh, I, I may not um, have any cases that bring to mind, you know, especially, you know, uh, from my perspective. But uh, I don't know, like, for example, I, I remember that back in the day when I used to, like, run the events, there were no commentators for, like, you know, like, Smash tournaments and stuff. So I had to, like, go in and, uh, and and actually cast some of the events. And back in the day, I wasn't really that much of a public speaker. I don't really think so myself either now. But, you know, like, all, 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 all sometimes you get the flack in chat, you know, like, hey, this guy sucks, stuff like that. And it's like, you, you got to just, like, go go with the flow, right? But, like, have you guys had any other challenges or things like that that may have come uh, through, through your way? Do you want to go Maybe, through? Maybe, um, yeah, 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 whoever. Can I go? Mini, 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 oh, okay, <laughs> I got it wrong. Sorry, guys. Uh, well, yes, of course. I I do believe that Twitch always brings uh, a challenge to oneself. In my case, it was a challenge of self improvement, a challenge of learning. Because when I started, I really didn't have much idea of how everything worked, like software. Uh, bringing on a camera, all the audio, and then making some improvements. And also uh, the self-improvement of being mo more open to people, uh, not being so shy. So it brings like all these personal challenges. And throughout the, as, as long, um, I mean, uh, throughout the time, more challenges came in uh, because of this uh, stream that I had started. So I had, I had, I started having uh, more commercial opportunities, marketing opportunities. I started working with Blizzard, with Blizzard as a caster, as a cast and as an, and as a host. And there were new challenges like facing a camera, facing maybe uh, social media also as well. So 
it all brought in a whole lot of challenges where you have to uh, keep in mind to um, keep improving yourself and improving your skills and learning everything related to streaming because it's not a not it's not only about the game and learning how to turn on a broadcast but also about working your own brand your name your social presence so it's a a whole new world if you could say so i understand that it... reference <laughs> sorry go ahead Connor, sorry yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in my case, like one of the uh, earliest uh, challenges that I can think of, uh, it's a little bit more on the technical side, I believe. So as I was saying before, before I come from a relatively small town and I'm talking like 2013, right? Like we didn't have many options by then uh, as we have today uh, for ISP services or, you know, just having a decent internet because you have, you, you need a, a stable upload speed to just be able to create content in general, right? And um, I, I, there was a point where I was like, okay, I, I really enjoy streaming. I really like the experience of this. Uh, I really like what it's doing to my life, but I have less than one megabit uh, upload speed. Like, how can I, I keep doing this? Because whenever I open my own stream, it's like a, it's like a presentation, like frame by frame. Like it's, this is awful to look at. And, and, and the audio, like if I don't do this or do that, like people won't listen to me. And I was like, how do I, you know, fix all of this? And um, at the same time, it was like, I, I also noticed that back in the day, like everything was in English, right? And I, I thankfully, like I am fluent enough in, in English to understand like tutorials or just follow around or just do some, you know, trial and error and try to, you know, put everything together in a way that actually works ish. <laughs> but um, uh, we didn't have a lot of channels back then uh, or, or a Spanish speaking community because nobody really knew how to do this. And if, if you were like, if, if you knew English, you knew like, oh yeah, I need like 10 megabits and I need this or that, that is not available in my country. So I don't know how to put two and two together. So it, it took a really, you know, a really uh, long time, I guess, uh, for the base community, the, the real, the, the, the very real OGs, as Pablo puts it, that were uh, there before us, and they came out with every single trick on the book, like how you can optimize your your stream with what you have, how you can you know make use of every single kilobit uh, that you can uh, use to actually stream. And then what I did was starting putting together like different tutorials and resources so that I can sort of not only translate but localize uh, what it takes for a streamer in Mexico or in uh, Argentina, for example, to actually put a stream together with what they have, because it's so different, right? And uh, I think that it was so interesting that over time, like more and more people starting like getting it and started like actually being able to stream even, even if their connection was not the best, even if they, they really had like every resource against them. Like I, I met streamers from Venezuela who have like half a megabit upload speed and, and they they were able to put together a channel and that was amazing to see. Uh, and by now, like you have so many more uh, ideas and resources and tutorials and there's always somebody to help you right now, I believe. So it's it's been a really, you know, a long way <laughs> from them to now. It really has. It really has, Carla. And um, I I guess it's it, it, that that's a cool thing, right? That back in the day, there weren't really not only content, but there really were many of us. And now that there's like a full blown community and that not only just happened uh, with the Twitch community of streamers, but also within Twitch as well, which we'll get to uh, a little bit later on. And I think that with this, um, some people can have like a base level understanding of where we're coming from. It's basically, you know, uh, we all we all engage with Twitch in some way or another uh, as, as people in the chat may be doing right now as users, as fans. And eventually that starts transforming into uh, an interest in wanting to participate in, be, in being, you know, being one with the community and actually putting yourself out there and, and live streaming content. But then how does that eventually transform into a, a job at Twitch, right? And that's where we're going to get at right now. And I think that's where folks are really interested in knowing. However, before I tell you all about that, I really want to plug all of the great causes that uh, LatinX and Gaming is supporting. Just to remind everyone that uh, Unidos Online is trying to raise a combined 5K total this weekend for both charities, both Game Hands and Pantera that they're supporting over here. So definitely feel free to consider donating because uh, I think it's really good causes of the ones that we're supporting over here in the Unidos, pod, in the Unidos online stream. So yeah, 
Um, just please consider that. I don't know if we have a, a command in chat. I think there's a Totify around there, but please definitely consider doing that. So having said that, uh, I, I think that we should go into like how that slowly goes and, develop, and develops, right? So uh, here with Carl and Hannah, we have different perspectives of how has that been like? How has that like development and getting into Twitch look like? Um, Carl has been from the very back in the day uh, when, you know, we didn't even have Twitch Mexico. Uh, I think I got a little bit along the lines of when that metamorphosis started happening, so to speak. And, and Hannah, Hannah is, you know, fresh, fresh of the fresh of the plane, so to speak, you know. And I, I think I think that's dope to hear because that gives you all an idea of like how has it been and how it is right now. So I, I, I guess that, that let's go let's go from the top in chronological order. So like, um, Carla, how was it when you started like um, getting into like actively working for Twitch, or how did that contact with Twitch actually happen? Because I can only imagine. But right now it's great that we can you know be out there for people. But back in the day, how did that look like? How many people in that time were there, or were there any, so to speak, before? Um. The only person that was in Latam was uh, Ignacio, who is currently my boss, actually. And he was like a position for the whole of Latam. We didn't even have a Brazil team back then. And as you know, Brazil is a massive place that has an amazing community and has so many, like, he has a, a really large team by now. So I'm talking like 2014 no, ish. Yeah. In, in my case, it's a little bit of the same story, I guess. So it, it was, I, I come from a uh, somewhat somewhat technical but not so technical background um i used to put together websites by uh, uh, for a living back in the day like i used to work in a tiny office there in sonora and uh, i was a front-end uh, person which means that all my day was you know putting together templates and css and playing around with apis and databases that kind of stuff right so where i was trying to um i was trying to learn some more of the coding side uh, and, and be able to do like more advanced stuff. And at the same time, I was also playing around with streaming, right? So through that side of, you know, designing overlays and alerts and APIs and everything that it takes from the, you know, behind the scenes, I guess, uh, it was really fun and interesting for me to see like how everything worked together, right? And so while I was playing around with that, learning a little bit of coding, I also like started streaming as a dumb experiment, really, and and to see like, let's see if I while I'm while I'm already doing this, maybe I can you know overcome my shyness and find somebody uh, to talk about with uh, games and uh, yeah, and 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 then it was like by doing all of this, it was when I found out that it was so difficult to put everything together because of the technical nuances that I spoke uh, earlier about. So since that happened. And I started like getting involved in the Twitch community by then. Um, we also found out that since we didn't have a lot of Spanish speaking channels back then, uh, we needed a place to put everything like in the same place. Like if I want to find streamers uh, that speak my language, how am I going to find them? You know, how, how can I search for them? Uh, I remember that back in the day, I used to type like Espanol or ES, which is short for Spanish in the search bar. And if by miracle, like some other channel happened to have like Spanish in, in his title or her title, then that's how you would find people. And and then back in the day, you would have to do that. And then if you got like a new viewer and you ask like, hey, how did you find me? He was like, oh yeah, I, I typed like Espanol in the chat and I found you. Hey, what's up? So what I did was try to use all of what I had learned by then. And I, with, with the help of, um, of a person that I really appreciate that is uh, City. She's from, she has uh, ascendancy from Costa Rica, I believe. She's also like a real old school IG. She's right now in the cross teaching community. Uh, she gave me the idea because she also had like sort of a technical background, like how, how can we do like some sort of list or directory or something to find like other streamers that speak our language, right? And uh, by playing around with that idea, I eventually developed a website that exists today that is called Streams Espanol. Uh, and it's just an aggregator. Like you can sign up and connect your channel. And uh, if, if you go to that website, you're going to find like a ton of channels that speak uh, the language. And then you have like a small list with uh, some tutorials and, you know, everything that it takes uh, in a small Facebook group. Basically, I guess it's like a small community hub uh, so that if you are an aspiring live streamer and, and you want to set everything up, you have a starting point, right? So by doing that and aggregating other channels and helping other channels get started, 
I kind of, you know, started getting really involved with the community. There was a point where I really, you know, pretty much knew everybody who was there by then. Um, and then because of that, I was invited to go to an event in Mexico City. It was um, it was a League of Legends finals event, I believe. So uh, Ignacio, who is the Twitch staff that I had mentioned earlier, uh, he said like, hey, why don't you come? Like I'm having this and this and this streamers come and, and we're gonna, you know, gather and meet each other in person uh, for the first time. And that was so, so, so incredible because I finally was able to, you know, meet some of the streamers that I have been talking about, but face to face. And and it's like, oh my God, I'm this viewer and that viewer. I'm like, oh my God, it's you, you know, it was so, so crazy. So I guess that it's kind of a right place, right time uh, thing, because by then Ignacio had been working for like six months ish, I believe. And, and since the community was starting to grow, he kind of needed somebody to help him. And he was like, hey, I, I see that you have been, you know, you pretty much know everybody in the community. You put these tutorials and these resources together. Like, why don't you actually join the team uh, directly at Twitch so that you can keep doing all of this and, and you know, develop uh, Twitch uh, Mexico was in my case. So I was the second employee um, of the whole uh, Twitch Laram team. So that's, that was five years ago by now. <laughs> Powerful. Powerful stuff, Carla. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that. Um, I think that uh, it's very important to highlight that. Yes, uh, I think that towards the end you can identify that it was it was you, you can say it was one of those right, uh, you know right place right moment kind of situations. But it wasn't just that. It was uh, you, you were able to be there because it was a combination of previous efforts that you were doing for the community. Right? It wasn't just that you just went to the party or whatever it, that was happening and that was it. Uh, you already were doing previous stuff. And I actually really recommend people that check out the streams of Espanol because um, it's selective to say, and you know, it's like a good way to like people within the Spanish language to consider uh, maybe growing and fostering your stream. But yeah, powerful stuff, Carla. I think that it was after that, when you started working at Twitch, that you started getting a lot of emails from me, annoying you about different esports <laughs> events. Do you remember those days? Boy, do I do, no? it's shame. I refuse yeah, to come yeah. at <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, th th no thank, you, thank you, thank you. But yeah, I, uh, act, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Hannah. No, I was just, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, so, sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm just sorry, gonna finish. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna say that uh, thanks to you, actually, I was always aware of whatever was going on, especially in the FGC. Like I saw this tournament, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh yeah, that that happened in Monterrey, that happened in Veracruz, in Mexico City, and it was always like very appreciated because you were so proactive about that. But we can probably talk about that later. Yeah, I guess it, it sort of goes into like a story from when you know you start and then you know towards how how it's been going along. I think it was around like a cool one year or two after you started working at Twitch that um, I actually moved from Veracruz to Mexico City to start doing more esports stuff. And I don't know how I got word that, uh, you know, uh, because I think I think I, I have met you before in a speedrunning thing and an AGDQ restream or something. And I, after that, I I, I I found out that you, you you started working at Twitch and it was like, all right, I'm gonna hit her up and, you know, tell her that, you know, we are doing over some stuff over here. And that eventually happened something similar, right? You know, like a meet, meet, meeting with staff in Mexico City and, you know, just connecting and just basically, hey, you know, lots of stuff that can be done, lots of opportunities. Um, I think that I don't want to say go ahead and bug Twitch staff with emails and, you know, like spam them and everything. I wouldn't I wouldn't really say that's the approach. Uh, it's more so, you know, if you think that there's something good that's worth sharing with the team, especially back in the day when there really wasn't a lot of like uh, there wasn't a lot of stuff. So, you know, it was hard to find. Uh, it, it was pretty good, but it was also, it wasn't just like, Hey, I have the stream. Can I put it on front page? It was more like, Hey, this is the stream. And it's, it's special because of this, we have this estimated pro, uh, range of viewers that we're going to get. And, you know, it's like, uh, something that I think that Twitch will be worth, wor 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 to support. Uh, I think, it, uh, for my case, at least in, you know, in going like how, how that happened for me, uh, I ended up pitching to Twitch, uh, to do a smash tournament in one of their events. I think it was campus party in Guadalajara a couple of years back. And uh, I think that was great because I don't know how, but Twitch somehow said yes. I think Carla was the one that said, hey, I think this idea is good. How do you think it will work out in the in the boot that we have? And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're here. Let's do it, right? And, you know, it's just more like supporting. Uh, I used to do esports production before that. 
and we were in the booth doing, you know, the, the, the smash stuff they wanted to do in the event, but I ended up helping out in other like general production stuff. And they, they eventually said, Hey, we have another event in like two months from now. Can you help us out with production? And, um, I, I, I ended up like going to events. I, I, I didn't even work for Twitch then, but they were flying me out. I didn't have money for like even an Uber. So getting a flight wasn't even like, you know, a, a consideration. So yeah, uh, just helping out, just helping out and putting yourself out there and trying to support the cause. And somehow that ended up uh, turning into like an offer as well from the team. Like, you know, well, it really wasn't an offer. It was more like, Hey, uh, there's, a <clears throat> so just, just stay, stay on top of like the job board that we have, because I don't know if you guys know, but here in twitch.tv, if you go into like the three dots over at the top nav, you can find, uh, our job board that we have in, in with all of the like job positions that may be open worldwide. So it's not like there's any secret uh job postings or stuff like that it's all out there in the public so yeah um but that's a little bit from what happened on my side like i said it was more like i i was sort of in like a, a lucky point in which it was already starting to develop but it wasn't still out there and there were great people like ignacio and carla now on the team but uh, i want to know from your side hannah how did that look for you since i know that how, how, how long has it been that you've been working at twitch like two or three months now yeah it's been uh three months I will be, yes, three months tomorrow or uh, the day. Oh, after tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. that's yes, awesome. That's right. Well, it's been a, it's been a long, strange trip because, um, as I mentioned, when I started my stream, I didn't have any technical knowledge. I had to uh, start le learning everything from scratch. I only knew about med school and that was it. And I knew that I loved gaming and sharing all my experiences. So that's with, uh, what I started. So. I started streaming. Eventually I got my partnership. I started making some earnings and it wasn't much at the moment, but I started using those earnings to improve, uh, to get a better microphone, better camera, maybe working more on my YouTube channel as well, like working on all my social media. And eventually it brought me more job opportunities. Uh, I started working with Blizzard. I, I've always been like a huge fan of uh, Blizzard games. And so uh, one day I was offered uh, the opportunity to work as a, as a host for Copa America, for Hearthstone and for Heroes of the Storm at that time. It feels so old now, but uh, it, like those were great times. And I, I was discovering that I was able to tailor a, a career for myself by looking always to improve. Um, eventually started working also with ESL and LATAM as a producer. So I started adding a lot of experience on the esports uh, side from uh, being a talent, also being involved with production, with uh, uh, working with uh, enhancing the product, also being always in touch with a lot of casters from uh, all Latin America, knowing about uh, the esports scene from CSGO, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, even Clash Royale from a lot of games. I started adding as, as I was going through all these experiences. And eventually I also started working as a broadcast manager. So it was, it kind of blows my mind that I started from scratch and I eventually was uh, a couple of years later, I was all very much involved, pretty much involved with all the esports scene in Mexico and in Latin America. So it took me to the point where I started working uh, in TV Azteca, which is a national, national TV outlet. So you have this girl that was just graduating from school, started her, her um, awful stream because the quality wasn't very good at the first time. And then uh, five years later, she was out on TV, like talking about games and esports and all these figures and uh, and also uh, commentating and hosting all these all these events. So at some point uh, there was an open an open job opportunity on Twitch and I really felt like. Um, I'm sorry. I really felt like that was opportunity for me to give back everything that Twitch has given me all along these years. And I really felt like I wanted to do more than just being behind the camera and smiling and talking about the games and all that stuff I already know how to do. So I just applied and I wished for the best. I uh, let along the interviews how all the skills, uh, I, how I got all the skills I had been acquiring along the years, how I understood what the community is aiming for, how you can improve a product and how a stream is always a product. 
So I don't know, that's pretty much it. And I, I always feel like um, I want to give back always. It's my, it's my way of saying thank you for all, uh, all Twitch has given me. I always want to give it, give it back to the creators. Awesome, awesome. Um, I think that one thing, one thing that people may note from each of these stories is that though they were through different means and in different time frames, there is one thing in common through them, and it's that there was a, an accurate record, so to speak, or there was time, there was some work put in before. Um, it, I, I, I hate to break this to people that think it's just a stream a lot and eventually someone will tell you Twitch, hey, come and work at Twitch. It doesn't really work that way. Um, so it's more so that, you know, it was an actual, um, an actual need to actually put, put something in the table for the community back in the day, there really wasn't a lot. Some people in the chat may, uh, I see the conversation on tax and language is hard, but it was back in the day to actually find people that spoke the same language as you or were from your upbringing or your community. And, um, uh, now while there's more people, there's still more work that can be done. And now us as Twitch staff, that's what we have to worry about. And that's basically what our day-to-day -day looks like. And that's something I really want to touch on uh, as some of the, you know, from streaming to staff now in the staff part of things. Uh, I just want to know that how did that shape you, you know, coming from the user side, from the community side of things, to so now being a full-blown Twitch staff, uh, how did that impact you at first? And what were you like, what did you want to push or what was your like priority to like, now I'm here, what can I do for the community? Like, Carl, like, could you go first? Sure. So, yeah, as I, I come from way back in the day, so things have definitely changed right now. And it's like, like if you have like the whole uh, directories by language, you have the whole tagging system, you have like several other tools that we, we didn't even exist back then. And uh, I always believe, I believe that they can, you know, there's always work to be done, of course. Like it's this is not our final form, I guess as I, I would say, uh, and we can keep pushing. So in our in my case, like I remember how I mentioned earlier, like I can see all of these tutorials that other kids in other countries have. Like here's this connection, this service, this whatever uh, that doesn't really apply to where we live, right? Uh, maybe I have a smaller connection. Maybe my PC is not as a uh, strong as uh, strong as i would need maybe i can do this instead of that so by by having that mentality of not only translating things but really really localizing them in a way that makes most sense for the the audience that you're working with um some of the things that we have done is that how can i actually make streaming a career or, or how can i put together with what i have uh, and try to make the most of that so in our case it means that uh we really need to make use of trying to be as engaging as we can in Latin America so that we can capture viewership through subs, for example, or monetization techniques, or, you know, educating partners so that they understand what works best for their region, their category, like their size. Maybe I should be, you know, leaning into trying to do this kind of format content. Maybe I should have like this frequency of ads. Maybe I should have manual ads. Like, Every channel is different because everybody has different needs, right? So in my case, what, uh, what we came through was we created a small program called Twitch Academy. And what we do with that is that we group together like several channels from different sizes and categories and try to have like a common topic. For example, if I'm into mobile games, just to say an example, or if I'm uh, based in this country or if I have this audience, like how does that play like in my strategy strategy as a streamer like what should i be taking care about so by by you know taking all of these universal best practices but really narrowing it down to what works best and makes the most sense for my case then that's where i can you know really know what i'm doing right and then in the those are like we we have had like three or four editions right now and um we had one in Mexico City a few years ago, then we had one in Argentina, then we just run, like, we're starting to run digital ones because of COVID, of course, and and it really helps, like, people understand and, and really network from uh, similarly, like, channels who are in the same boat, essentially, so that they can share, like, best practices and share, like, what do they do and how they grow together. Uh, this also goes, like, a little bit with 
trying to uh, train these guys as influencers, as public figures, like how can you be more appealing for brands? How can we, you know, start like really putting you yourself out there so that you can start like uh, using every channel that you can so that together you actually have something that you can eventually make a living of, for example. Uh, and then how you can, you know, use this knowledge and pass it down to the next generation and so forth. So in, in, I think that one of the largest things that I, like, I, I like having here is uh, educating people because we know the struggle. Like I was there years ago. I know yeah. how it is. So how can we use what we have learned so that others don't have to struggle like with it, right? I think that's the biggest takeaway that I have here. Being there, or as the kids would say, I know that feel, bro. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I definitely uh, share that sentiment. I think that one what one mention that will come from all of us is that um, we, we've all had our, our own perspectives and what we want to bring to the table when we started working here at Twitch. But I think that now in a, in a more like business type of way, uh, our main focus is how can we make sure that here in Latin America, Twitch is a viable means to which people can actually, you know, drive and be successful, you know, like uh, get some money, you know, get you know, get some money or either get some fame or just, you know, find the love from the community. So basically lots that can be worked on there, but I would just like to um, maybe get a, a fresher perspective, maybe coming from you, Hannah, you, like yeah. I said before, fresh off the plane, like, you know, maybe I, I don't know how new you feel this is still to you, but I just want to know, like coming into working at Twitch from all the previous experience that you mentioned, uh, what what what's, what goes through your mind when you start thinking about, uh, okay, what can I do for Twitch in LM? Well, what goes through my mind at this moment is that times change, right? We, we come from a Twitch that was very dedicated to gaming. I believe uh, back at those days, uh, the rule was you had to be streaming a game no matter if it was even a tabletop game. Now, uh, it's pretty much like the sky is the limit, right? You have musicians sports stars, uh, even chickens on streams. Like you have all these possibilities. And now our job is pretty much uh, helping all these creators to learn to take advantage of these uh, tools, of all the monetizing tools, for example, so they can build a career on their own. So that's pretty much a big challenge. And if you can use your own experience, in my case, if it's a five-year experience on production, on product improvement, on how to build your own brand. And if I can share it with all these creators, then I'm very happy to do it. And that's what we're doing at the moment, right? So I feel that um, as long as we get involved with more categories and more experiences, uh, we're facing new challenges. And and it's I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it is a burden. I, I try to see it more on the fun side of how can you build up your community with a couple chickens and with Twitch bits and subscriptions and so on. So I feel like it's a pretty fun activity and I feel like there's a lot of fulfillment when you see all these creators actually building their career and breaking through. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah, for sharing that. Uh, I think that even if you see someone from back in the day like Carla or someone uh, as new as Hannah, um, the, the the sentiment is the same. You know, the, the key the key goal is, um, you know, Twitch is a is a global is a global platform. So we need to make sure that you know the things that you may be able to see in the U.S. or which or wherever else in, in different regions. You know, they also happen in that time, and we also make sure to bring them. And and it's not just bringing stuff from other places, but that time is also I think uh, we're super proud of like having initiatives that actually go on to be adopted by other teams. Uh, I would like to highlight, for example, that the Twitch Academy events that Carla mentions, you know, it was something that started here in Latin America and eventually slowly started being rolled out to other countries. And I, I know that there's been stuff in Japan, in Europe, and I know that, you know, I, I think in the US it's been worked on as well. So um, yeah, it's not just what we can grab and, and bring over here, but also the, the ideas that we can, you know, generate and that have been adopted by the global, by, by the business as a whole globally. And I think that's pretty that's pretty dope and something that we should be proud of. And I think the last note I want to take out about, you know, that uh, the staff part of things before we go into questions is also know that while we also work to help the creators here, we also work to generate a community of Latinos, uh, the Latinx community and the Hispanics within Twitch. And I think this is pretty important to know because I remember those first trips to San Francisco uh, back in the day, Carla, you know, it was just us in a corner talking Spanish, you know. 
those were the days or were they i don't think so really but can, can you speak a little bit to that yeah i was i was about to anyway you didn't have to ask <laughs> yeah i i remember like the very first time i was in the twitch office in san francisco and that was actually my first time in san francisco at all and in general i guess it was like uh 2015 i believe and that was by then it was only ignacio and and other per uh, and, and me and i think a third person that was it uh nobody else in the whole company i could find uh that wasn't speaking spanish maybe there were like maybe you know far in between like in different teams but that was not really like a centralized place or somebody like you, you didn't really know anybody by then because we were new again so and, and we were like based here in mexico so it was like i i think that going from there to what we have today um and overall, like this extends also to the again the, the Twitch Spanish speaking community that is like you know breaking every record by now. Um, it's I can definitely see like how things have changed over time. Yes, it has, and just like it, like we mentioned, that just as it changed for the streaming community, the users, the viewers, it also has changed within Twitch. Uh, even up to 2017, uh, there really wasn't much of like a group or community of Latinos within Twitch. And that was when we started rolling in. Uh, I think around 2018 was when the the Latin Guild was created uh, at Twitch. You may see in the slide that we have here in the stream that there's a lo the Twitch logo, but with a with a flair to it, right? The squeak of the bear. And that's actually the logo of the Latin Guild, which is the Latin X slash Hispanic Employee Resource Group that Twitch has. And it's a space that we generated because we, di we didn't find any other people like us within the company. And we wanted to make a space where, hey, if you're out there, you know, this is where we can hang out. And it's been great. It's been amazing. I can tell you that from 2018 to now, you know, I think it's been about 100 members, lots of different events, and the support that Twitch has given to that cause, and not only the, the, the Latin X Spanish community, but also, you know, just in general to all the identity groups is amazing. Uh, the, they give a lot of autonomy to the guilds, and it's thanks to that that we can, you know, come and support uh, events like Unidos right now or Latin X in gaming in general, you know, uh, if you've been to PAX South, for example, at the start of the year before, you know, um, when there was still a thing called events, you, we were there and we've always tried to support the team. It was actually through, through, through Twitch that we met one of the member, the leading members of uh, Latin X in games, which is Silkris, who I think is in the chat, so hi. So yeah, um, basically, um, it's not only about it, it, it's, it goes both ways. It goes, how can we grow Twitch for the viewers? We, how we can grow Twitch as a company to better help the Latin community, the Latin X Spanish speaking community. And I'm very really proud of the work that has been done so far with that. So um, I personally, as a Latino, I feel very happy to be working at Twitch. And um, I also would like to say that I think there's a lot of opportunities for that. Uh, like I said, it's not like the job board is secret. You can find it over here on Twitch.tv from the very own uh, stream channel that you're watching right now. So. Really, it's been a long journey, and it's been through. It's got all, all all sorts of ups and downs in general. But that's basically how uh, a, a sort of like one hour version of how from streaming to staff looks like. And I hope that it has helped you guys. I would just like to, before I open up the floor for questions, uh, maybe Carla, Hannah, do you guys want to add into sort sort of what I'm speaking to right now? Sure. sure. I think that. I think that as you have seen over like, like both old school Twitch uh, and uh, newer, like I'm an old fart by now, I know, but uh, the, the <laughs> sentiment that we mentioned before, it, it, it remains like trying to find like gaps that you can bridge or that you can feel like everybody has something like different skills, different connections, different ideas, different perspectives and backgrounds. like. No matter where you are, I think that you find something and you can probably leave it in a better state as it was. In my case, that was by, you know, a little bit of a technical side of, you know, building blocks uh, for up and coming streamers. Uh, in my case, Spanish speaking streamers and everything it took uh, to get started. Uh, and now we have like so many things in an established community. Um, but that's how I pulled my way in, like trying to make something uh, better, right? Such such an in can in Hannah's case like bridging esports and and the Blizzard communities and everything that she has done like even her background as a doctor and, and how that transitions into streaming and, and and you know that perspective that you have it, it's it's amazing like everything that you can do together so I think that my my biggest takeaway is that use 
the tools that you have and also try to, you know, work with the people that you know, like it, it doesn't really matter where it is, but we, we are thankful that we have this whole thing called the internet where you can find like the same crazy people who is as crazy as you are about the things that you're passionate about and you can make use of that. Like we, we are very fortunate to be living in a place where you can, you know, make things happen, I guess. That's so valuable, so Carla. Valuable. And I would like to uh, add another comment, like um, maybe as a conclusion for myself or for what I've been talking about. Um, I really see it from two dimensions, like being a streamer uh, has its uh, like um, your own perspective and the perspective you have on the outside, on the on the social media, all your network or all the people, you know. So first of all, I really feel like uh, you have to be honest to yourself and be open to asking yourself, what am I doing right? And where do I need to improve? What do I need to improve? It's not, it's not much about what you're doing wrong. It may not be wrong, but it could be better. So see, a, see look at it more like, a, like an opportunity, a point of opportunity for yourself. And here in Latin America, there is always a sentiment, sentiment that we may be a little step behind uh respect to other regions or the rest of the world but building something together really takes on you uh, building alliances with other people so i will take the comment that uh build something else with someone else uh even co-streaming or interactions or building uh maybe your own program with other creators will build more alliances and will might bring something interesting in the future so i really feel like all these uh opportunities, all these opportunities of growth come in those two uh, dimensions, like uh, yourself and how, what is uh, your perspective or your, or where you are standing within the community. So on that, if you take like those two perspectives, you can realize you can have a better scope of what challenges you have, what opportunities may come in the future, and you can keep on building. Oof. Powerful words from both Carla and Hannah. I really thank you for what you've said. Um, this is uh, great takeaways from both of you and I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Uh, I think sort of in general, that's uh, sort of our piece, uh, what we wanted to come here to share with the audience, but we still have some time left. So I would really like to open the floor for questions if anybody wants to ask something. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be just in English. I'm going to take a moment and speak in Spanish. Uh, creo que hay gente aquí que, está, eh, que son eh, hispanohablantes. Si alguien tiene alguna pregunta en español, no hay ningún problema. Lo puede hacer con mucho gusto y se las respondemos. Um, so yeah, just in case you guys want to ask something, just a reminder, uh, we are the Twitch Dad and Partnership team. So, you know, like um, we are open to all questions, but depending on the scope of it, we may or may not be able to cover it. So just so you know. Um, I think that we have a great one to start with. I think this is for you, Hannah. Uh, they are asking what fact, or, or sorry, I don't know if it's Hannah or Carla. Uh, what faction did you play in WoW? Oh, it was Horde. Always been Horde. <laughs> la Horda. Yes, por la Horda. Por la Horda. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get some, some opinionated folks in the chat in, in regards to that, you know, or supporters. But yeah, um, and I also just want to mention while we're getting some questions that, you know, part of our part of our job is actually, you know, trying to go to the community and give them the opportunities that we may or may not have not had previously, right? And I, for example, the I, I'm really looking forward to the speed running sections of the Unidos live stream because we actually help connect the speed running community here in Latin America with Latinx and games. And we've got a great show, you know, I'm really looking forward to the Mulag speed run or the Blasphemous one, a uh, great game from Spain. So yeah, just uh, just so you guys know, uh, we also helped out with that one, and really looking forward to those to, to to those segments. But yeah, um, any other questions? Feel free to let us know, guys. Uh, we're gonna be here until the top of the hour, or if there's not other questions, I don't know. In the meanwhile, uh, I just oh oh, I think that good to note. Uh, I saw it in the chat previously, but we reached six hundred dollars in donations towards the five thousand. Uh, dollar goal. Uh, just a reminder to everyone that this live stream is also trying to raise a combined 5k total this weekend for both the charities that they're supporting, which are Game Heads and Pantera. 
A little bit about those, Pantera is the only organization in the world that is devoted exclusively to the conservation of the world's 40 wildcat species and their ecosystems. That's real stuff. That's real stuff. So please help out the cause as well as Game Heads, which uses video game design, development, and DevOps to engage, prepare, and train low-income youth and youth of color ages 15 to 24 in the Bay Area for careers in the tech and the video game industries. Also a very important cause, uh, just so people know, I don't know if you guys have looked into this, but uh, by the 2040s, the estimated population of Latinx and black individuals or people in color in general is estimated to reach 40% in the United States. So 40% of the US would be either black or person of color or Latino. So that's, that's powerful stuff to note. And I think that it's great that we're empowering the youth of the future for when those times come about. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just speaking as much as I can, but I think I found some questions over here. Uh, it's in Spanish actually. So, algunos planes que puedan hablar sobre el proyecto para hispanos en un futuro. Um, Carla, quieres decir algo? Sí, sí. I'm not sure if it would be better to speak in both languages. So I'm just going to do this twice. Uh, okay. there's, there's something that is coming. Uh, I would call, I cannot say like exactly what it is until, you know, certain things are, you know, final, but uh, uh, we're very excited because there's a small, you know, I would say that it is a gift to the Latin America community coming very soon, maybe sooner than you expect, fingers crossed. Pero estoy diciendo que se viene un pequeño regalo para la comunidad de Latinoamérica. No puedo decir exactamente qué es, pero ustedes cuando lo vean van a saber de qué estoy hablando. Va, va, va a sonar, espero. Eh, no, no diré más, lo dejo así, ¿ok? <laughs> Good stuff coming for that app. I hope guys uh, are looking forward to that. <clears throat> and if I may say something that is actually out there and it's been worked on and it's really recent, uh, we actually just recently rolled out Twitch Rivals for that in America. So we Ooh. used to have some Twitch Rivals events back in the day from time to time. But uh, we actually just recently started to roll out the full plan for Twitch Rivals for the region. So very excited for that, for all of the Spanish speaking Americas and also for Brazil. So really look, look forward to that. We're, uh, we opened up Stra with PUBG Mobile recently, and we're going to be bringing more games to you guys. So definitely stay around for all of the cool things that we're going to be having in the future, just like Carla mentioned. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go, Jet Set says, can you tell us about your observations of Twitch use since social distancing? You've got a lot of cool new streamers. So I can take this one or... Okay, uh, well, uh, yeah. Uh, what can I say? It's been popping uh, for sure, and that's been a lot of work as well for us. But I think that um, Twitch is at a very great place in the intersection of, you know, live entertainment and community, which are things that people are looking for right now when they can go out of their homes. So, um, and a lot of people from outside of gaming and within gaming have taken notice of that. And over here in that time, we've we've had a lot of like influx of people, you know. Um, we have different um, people to cover different verticals here in the team. For example, I handle sports. And I've had to deal with a lot of like guys coming in, you know, like football players, like, hey, how do, how, how do I use Twitch? Or, you know, how can I play Barrowland from my PS4 or stuff like that? And you got to go and, you know, help them out and go through the ropes. And, you know, like, hey, you know, welcome, welcome. Here's what you got to do. And, yeah, we've got a lot of information. We got a lot of, like, influx of people. And we've also tried to help out as much as we can and, you know, like, try to support all of the new non-endemic content that may be coming to the, to, to the, to the website. If, if I may add, I would like to yeah. say that, I mean, we are really at the year mark by now from all of this, you know, global situation that is going on. And um, I, I guess that all I can say by now is that I'm grateful that we are some, you know, we're at gatherings, but like, given everything that's going on right now, um, we can, you know, I always go by the hand of making use of what we have, right? So in this case, we have a place where people can get together because they cannot in person and they can, you know, not feel alone. They can share, they can learn, they can have fun, they can interact. And um, that, that is, I think that is really meaningful, uh, especially right now with what, everything that's going on. What I can say is that uh, I'm gonna speak for Latin America for now, but um, I would say that the kind of growth that we're seeing and the kind of stuff that is happening right now is probably ahead of us like two, maybe three, maybe even four years uh, faster than we expected. Like we, ha we, ha we are coming to a place where 
we're basically seeing like celebrities, like actual celebrities, sports athletes, uh, musicians, like regularly joining the platform. Sometimes they came out of nowhere and they're streaming on their own. And this is the kind of stuff that I would I would have never seen this happening like right now. I, I would say I would have seen this happening maybe two or three years from now, but everything was accelerated because of this. So it's it's I guess it's a really uh, interesting situation because, of course, like I, I I want to go out and I want to you know meet my friends and and just you know get everything back to normal. But at the same time, I'm grateful that we have somewhere where we can actually hang out while that happens. Yes, uh, as the kids would say, it is lit. So <laughs> yeah, um, I too have been looking a lot into music, uh, especially some of the sports stuff that we've been getting. Uh, really looking forward to that. I think that we are at the hour. Uh, so I think that that may be it. But what, what else to say? I just hope that this has helped out people. And you, just so you know, you know, Twitch has Latinx employees. Twitch has people in that time. We're actively working to help the Latinx Hispanic, Hispanic community and, you know, just keep supporting and growing the business over here and for them. Right. So, um, definitely I want people to take that, 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 that away the most. And also just so you know, um, we are, are, are here to support you. Please definitely feel free to reach out either in the chat. I'll be here around for a bit later on. And also I think the Twitter handles out there on stream. If you guys want to like reach out, uh, happy to support and, you know, just like keep doing at it, you know, uh, there, there, there's a lot of us out there and we're really working to, you know, help support you. And so we can help out in any way, any way, shape or form, please feel free to reach out. Um, can I cover that? Anything else you guys want to add? I think that's it, Pablo. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Get out there, yeah. do stuff. Whenever you All start right. like meeting those people and you see them together, the rest will come. Yeah. Let's go. Well, thank you very much, everybody. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this panel. Hope it has helped you out. Thank you so much, uh, Latin Xing Games, for inviting us. And, you know, keep supporting. Those two, some more content, some more activities. And, well, we'll see you around here. Uh, muchas gracias todos. Thank you. Adios. Gracias. Adios.